everybody. Today I'm talking to Candace Gilead. She is one of my best friends and I am so excited to connect with her. Um, it's been a little while since we ran together, so it would be good to catch up on all of life's happenings. Candace, um, tell us about yourself. My name is Candace Gilead. I'm one of Lena's best friends. <laughs> um, it's great to be you here. You all should know her. <laughs> Duh. Uh, thanks for having me on. This is kind of cool. Um, a little about me. I've got a lot of labels. Um, mom, as one of the ones I'm most proud of. Wife. Um, been married a long time. I don't know. I have to do the math. 20. It'll be 23 years this January. Wow. Um, and I'm also a business owner. I run a digital marketing agency and I've done that for about 10 years for my own agency and have so much fun with it. And um, I am also an assistant coach. I am um, a runner and yeah, haven't been running so much lately, but that's definitely still a label that I hold near and dear. Always. Forever Runner. <laughs> Tell me about your company. What is involved? Who are your clients? Um, what kinds of things do you do in your 30 second elevator spiel? 30 second elevator. <laughs> <laughs> uh, healthcare professionals pay me to help them generate leads using digital marketing strategies is the 10 second spiel on that. Um, to go a little bit deeper on that, we have niched down uh, to more of the healthcare sector to help them leverage um, paid traffic, organic traffic, to get leads in the door, to make their phone ring, to make people sign up um, with them on whatever desired action it is that they're looking for their clients to get. And I know you've been super successful. I love that you share the wins with us. So we're always cheering yeah. you on. Um, it's very exciting to see you grow that company. The podcast is about the village. We all kind of have, well, maybe not all. And this is probably why I feel like this is a need <laughs> or a niche. Not and, all like ours. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, you know, people are so lonely and uh, in this world, a lot of the times I get comments like, your friends are so awesome. How do you meet people like that? How do I get involved in a group like that? And so um, I was thinking, how? Yeah, I've, I really didn't have connected friendships until I was like 40. And um, I found you guys through a running group. We live in the same city. We're both Christians. We're both moms of similar age kids, um, but we for we may have never met had it not been for running, right? <laughs> so um, that is how I found a big chunk of my village, and I feel like that's probably your village too, for the most part. Is this is who we do life with on the regular? Um, so you were one of the people who put. A running group together, you know, what transpired? How, why did we put a group together and what do we do? What are our core values? Um, I mean, other than showing up to the races and looking good and winning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we're looking so good at the end. <laughs> hey, our shirts match. <laughs> we have our medals on. We look good. <laughs> good enough, I guess. Oh, that is, yes, you're so right. Like, what we have is extraordinary. Um, I, I'm the same. I, I didn't have a tight group of friends um, until I, I was, think I was late thirties. Um, geez. I'm trying to think of like how it all began. <laughs> um, I, yeah, part of a, a part of a running group. And um, I would say, okay, I'm going to go way back here. Do you want to know how this started? Let's get yeah. to the core. Give credit where credit is due. This is the Lord's design here. I had a falling out with my sister and this had happened, you know, years before. And I was literally like crushed, heartbroken, grieving, sobbing. And I started to pray. Um, the Lord gave me a message that said, it's going to be okay. It's not going to be the same, but it's going to be okay. And that started, began that healing process. Had that not happened, 
I don't think everything else would have. Hmm. Um, I began to pray for friendship. I began to pray very specifically for the type of friend that I wanted. I prayed for somebody who loved to run, who loved the Lord, who would um, be able to do life alongside of me, who read, who I could have deep conversations with, who um, like right down. I mean, God just blessed the heck out of me. And it started with one friend and had all of those and and more. And then it was like, but that's that's just God and his love for us. Then it began of, I'm going to bless you even more. What I learned in just one after the other, as, as more and more friends um, came into the running picture through this one specific running club, friends exampled how to invest and how to further grow my harvest, um, how to plant the plants, how to water, how to do all of those Mm -hmm. things, which to be completely honest, I didn't know how. And it's through, honestly, through the modeling of you and and other friends in our circle that have allowed all of that growth to happen. But I, I really don't think it would have happened without God and without a willingness to want to show up for other people and a willingness to be changed by others for good. Oh, that, that is beautiful. Yeah, for sure. So I love to tell the story of how I met you and Carrie and Alma and Andrea. (laughs) So (laughs) I was a brand new baby runner. Um, A friend saw me running randomly because I did like three miles and didn't die because uh, <clears throat> I put my money where my mouth was and signed up for a half marathon when I turned 40. Right. So since I signed up, I figured I better start training. So I, you know, got my sketchers that were too tight, cotton socks on, like no concept totally of what normal. I need, <laughs> all the normal, normal stuff. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I got out there and did like a three mile run and didn't die. And a friend saw me, messaged me and said, Hey, we have a running group. We meet, you know, we do longer miles every Saturday. You should come out. So I was like, all right, I'll come out. So when I came out, I met, you know, a few people. I learned the proper gear that I need, (laughs) the proper fitted shoes and socks and, you know, clothes make all the difference in the world. And so um, that was like the first major thing. I was like, oh, you don't know what you don't know, right? You've got to learn from other people. Mm -hmm. Um, So fairly early on, I would say probably just a few weeks in, um, I was running with this group. We circle around and I think by then I've already had almost like eight or nine miles, right? And here come these gazelles in slow motion. (laughs) Not even. (laughs) No, yes, even, right? So like we're running down foothill and like you guys round chase and you're in this formation. It's like like (laughs) the Baywatch formation is what I always you know, picture in my head. And I was like, who are those girls? And they said, oh, those are our Boston girls. They're training for Boston Marathon. And at that time, I had no concept of what Boston Marathon is, but it sounded really impressive. And I was like, oh, I want to be like them. I want to run with them. And um, the girl I was with, she's like, you should. They're really nice. They'll they'll let you run with them. So I... Um, cut up to you guys and I joined you uh, for like a mile because that's all I could handle. I remember because I was like, dang, she's still here. (laughs) That is all I could handle at that time. Uh, But it was enough to, uh, for you guys to kind of share your little tidbits. Like, you know, Andrea's like, oh, I'm a mom of, you know, four kids. And I started running with a stroller and, you know, you're like, I have two kids and, Carrie has two kids and Alma has, you know, four kids. So I was like, oh, they're people just like me. So, um, but they just maybe are further ahead. And so they're running faster. And so I, that's a very memorable day for me. Um, I didn't run with you guys for quite a while. Um, 
I did my half marathon. I did really well at that. And I started training for the next one and the next one. Um, but it took a little while to get my speed up to where I could not ask you guys to like slow down for me. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I, I got to interject really fast because what other people, I think they don't have perspective of this and I, and I have to offer a lot of people, well, not now, now I'm like a sloth right now, but when I'm like in top um, training season and, and I'm faster <laughs> than what's going on now, um, I, I think a lot of people are intimidated to run with us. Yeah, I, I was because I was like, I'm not going to ask him to slow down for me, you know. But you, most people won't even try Right. And what I really loved about you is, I mean, that took, it, that had to have taken a tremendous amount of courage to be like, all right, let's do it. And you just jumped in and you didn't just jump in. The, there's so many things I, I just gained like huge respect for you without knowing you just from the actions. You knew that where you were at wasn't the best that you could be. And you knew that there was another level that you wanted to be at and you were going to have to change from your comfort zone, what you knew, and you saw an opportunity pass by. And because you were already prepared with a goal in mind, you were ready to take that liter literal step. Yeah, I showed Oh. Totally. Yeah. I showed up to track and you came alongside me and you said, what's your 5k pace? And I was like, I don't know, Candace, I've never done a 5k. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is where your coaching came in is like you ran alongside me. You saw my cadence. I don't know what you saw, but you're like, you're at 740. That is the pace you need to keep for your 5k. Um, so that, you know, I was like, oh, okay, well, Candace says I'm at 740, so I better run at 740. I was listening um, for your breathing. I was trying to speed you up until you were breathing hard. <laughs> well, I, I don't know this stuff. I didn't start running until yeah. I was 39. So it was so helpful to have somebody who's been running since you were what, in high school or even before that, probably, um, just kind of offering tips and tricks and like how to move your legs, how to move your arms, you know, um, it's super um, helpful to have this coach like, you know, motivation where you're like, you can do it, you can do it to the next post. You know, don't stop, don't stop now. You know, we don't stop now. And that's really what, what got me to the point where I was able to run Boston Marathon with you guys this year. And that, you know, that was just like one of my highlights for sure. Um, so when you were describing uh, the kind of friend that you prayed for, I can name so many girls in our group that fit that description. Exactly. Now it's like, we have a group text of 15 girls that show up. Um, you know, we show up at 5 AM sometimes during training season, it's 4 30 or 4 15. It depends on how many miles we have to do. Um, uh, but that is like the commitment that it takes. And I will tell you, honestly, like I could probably do without the running part. <laughs> but but I show up because that is where that is where we do life together. That is where we pour our hearts out. I remember something that I learned from you guys is I was going through a hard time. And as we're running, one of you is like, well, let's just stop and pray right now. And I'm yeah, like, and I'm looking at my uh, watch and going like, but, 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 but our time, it's like ticking. I've got Strava on. <laughs> you know, this is where my mind is that, is it's like, me, right? <laughs> like, you know, we, I, I'm achieving here, you know, um, yeah. but it was just like such a learning experience for you guys to just stop and pray uh, pray right now. Like, let's not say we will pray for you later. Like, let's just stop and pray right now. And nobody cared about, you know, our speed run or how many miles we're going to post later on. It was just about taking care of a friend right then and there. And since then, I've seen you guys do that multiple times and, you know, been a part of that. I love that we rejoice with um, those of us that rejoice and we cry with those that have taken losses or have deep hurts. Like we've lived through some stuff together. Like 
let's just, you know, at the very least, let's just mention 2020 and 21. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, we lived through some stuff together. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just like uh, the, the parallel there, the, the symbolism of what you were saying when, you know, I'm coming alongside you on the track and we're going step for step and coaching you through whatever it is. We've all done that for one another um, in life. And I'm like you, like I am goal charged. Why are we messing around? <laughs> you know, like... Okay. Talking I'm here to work. Being, I used to get so annoyed that we would um, talk for five minutes before a run uh, because, yeah, we're on the clock. Yeah, and I'm like, goal. if we allow God to work in those moments, he will multiply our time and our talents. And As we've seen time and time again. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I have gotten better as a runner and as a person as a friend, because I have submitted to those moments instead of fighting them. Yeah, so true. So our group is called Crown Chasers. Um, it took a little while to come up with that name, but um, what is the significance of that name? Oh, so yeah, that was another literally just, I forget what we had before. Was it smiles or I, I can't even remember. We went through several iterations of a name and um, I remember it vividly uh, running up skyline and God was just like crown chasers mm. because we are chasing the crown, God's crown that it talks about in, um, well, it talks about it several places in the Bible, Hebrews and first Corinthians. And, um, and that is truly what we're chasing. Um, and then it kind of has a little playfulness there because we also are chasing crowns of victory for races. And then we mm -hmm. also are chasing crowns on Strava. <laughs> Always. Yeah, which is, you know, if, if you're the best on specific little um, short segments, then you can earn a victory crown on that. So it was just it was fitting um, for so many reasons. And yeah, as soon as that was, it was literally just from God, I'd like this is the name. Yeah. It, I mean, we also live in Corona, which is. Oh, yeah. And Corona. You know, <laughs> <laughs> crown in Spanish. Um, so, yeah, all kinds of things. But, yeah, when I ran my first marathon, um, it was L.A. Marathon in 2020. Um, I didn't sign up. I wasn't trained up. It was supposed to be my training run. Um, so I took somebody else's bid that could not make it. So I ran as a 25 year old girl. <laughs> um, but I, I, I did my first half under someone else's name too. <laughs> I remember just every step of the way going like, gosh, this is just like life. You know, we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, um, that are cheering for us. You know, we all start at, you know, the same place and, you know, the gun goes off and they say, go, right? We all have this destination of 26.2, but each one of us has our own cadence, our own pace. Um, we have our own partners. Um, you know, some are Listening alone on I'm track and we listen yeah. to music, some yeah. don't, but there was just like, so many parallels to what it's like to run a marathon and run a marathon of life. Um, Ryan Hall has this um, line, great line that has always been so impactful for me, run the mile you're in, mm -hmm. right? So it's kind of like mental toughness of why are you worried about mile 20? You're in mile 10, like run this mile, run this mile of your life, right? Mm -hmm. Um run this particular season of your life um, instead of pining for what what just happened or what's, a you know, you're not there yet. So um, there is just something about training and running a marathon that is, um, God always talks to life me in like yeah. life, life giving. Yeah. It's a lot of work. It's hard. I have like zero motivation right now. Um, <laughs> I am I'm like but I continue showing up. Okay. Zero motivation, but but discipline, right? Um, 
but you know this, this life this is a parallel with life we it really is seasons we're pushing hard for something specific and then yeah. sometimes we're coasting you know coasting for me right now is um i have zero motivation but i'll show up where are we running what time are we running um I did not wake up to run eight miles this morning. I will be honest. I love it. I just, I showed up to a specific meeting place because I knew there's going to be people running there, right? Yeah. And lo and behold, I ended up doing some intervals and speed and looked at the watch and go like, uh, I would have brought some water if I knew I'm going to be doing eight miles right now. <laughs> you know? Um, but it's just that um, God surprises us when we show up, you know, it, it would be things that are noticed, whether it's a conversation, whether it's um, the sunrise, whether it's um, just being grateful that our bodies can do this, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so one other thing that I really love about our group that I feel like that's very unique to us mm -hmm. as crown chasers, who we are, is how we celebrate each other's birthday. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. So it was 2020 for me uh, when we celebrated my first birthday and you guys reached out and said, well, what do you want to do? And I'm like, oh, well, this, everything's yeah. closed, you know, but let's go do a run at the beach. Like that would be what I want to do. I want to have a picnic and a run at the beach. Mm -hmm. um, so we did that run and then we ended up finding a patch of grass, um, I like a, like a water <laughs> plant because yeah. all of the picnic tables were closed. Like you couldn't just sit at a normal picnic table at the beach. Um, yeah, it was crazy. But so we're, we're sitting there. Um, we got our yogurt, granola, fruit. It yeah. was just beautiful. And um, you guys turned to me and you said, so for um, our birthdays, we speak out things that we love about a person. And um, you and Andrea, I believe, I think that was just yeah, three of us that day. Three of us. Yeah. Um, you guys looked me in the eyes and have told me some beautiful things that you loved about me. And that was so touching for me because I don't want to say no one's ever told me words like that, but it was just so genuine and so like life-giving to me. That was just so meaningful. That is something that I'll always remember. Um, but what we do on our birthdays is, um, for example, I turned 44 this year. So on our birthday, we do a run. So for somebody that's 44, we do 4.4 miles and then we usually have some sort of a coffee and coffee yeah. cake or bagels or some kind of celebration to honor the person. Um, of course, there's always uh, there's a uh, Sylvia led um, happy birthday ballad. <laughs> that is hilarious, but um, I love that. And we bring individuality to it uh, for for who that person is. Um, yeah, yeah. So the so the gifts, for, especially with the gifts. Uh, yes, gifts. And then I'm just thinking, like, we did something special for for Sylvia and all of her syllisms. And oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. So I'm one of our runners, Sylvia, turned sixty last year, and we had shirts printed with Sylvia isms. Yes. She says the funniest, <laughs> darnest things, and so each one That's of us. Hard. I gave had, up one that stands for Lent. <laughs> Yes. For government work. <laughs> like yes. Like, Mine was fantastic. good enough for government work. Yeah. <clears throat> They're just, um, God is good and I'm grateful. She says that all the time. So that's, that's pretty cool. But I, I do love how we do celebrate each individual specifically to, um, what they need. Um, one of the telling things about that, that, um, you came up with is sending Andrea and Chris away for a night. Um, they have six kids. They never get to go anywhere. Um, just always busy with their soccer life and kid life and work. And so um, the way that we were able to love on her for her birthday is take her kids. So I, I, I think this is a good lesson right here. Um, it's being, it's listening and being willing to pivot. Because we had a different plan 
for her birthday of what we were going to do for her. And we're, here we go. We're on a run doing life together. Yeah. And she's just talking about kind of where she's at and all of that. And then I messaged the group. I'm like, Hey, what if we do this instead? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And as you know, like, you know, handling six kids is, is not an easy task, but we have a community, we have a tribe. And, and I loved how people are like, oh, I'll take that one. I'll take those two. I'm like, I can take one to the theater. We got this. So this was one of the examples of how community shows up beautifully. Uh, one other example I have is, you know, my par- when my parents had COVID a couple of years back, yeah. several of you guys um, dropped off food at their door, like you guys don't really know them. They're my parents. Um, but it's, it was just like, what do you need? What do they need? What do they have? And people just showed up and that was so meaningful to them. They were like, wow, how lucky are you to have a group of friends like that? Yes. Yes. And I think all of our parents see this. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I know like Carrie's parents have seen that my parent, my mom has seen that and they just like you, you, you have very special friends and, these are people that, I mean, are, are, you know, our parents' ages that have lived a, an entire lifetime and they're recognizing there's something special. Oh, for sure. Yeah. If I ever would to move anywhere, that this would be like the most devastating thing that I we just come would away. have to. Yeah, I know. I'm like, why can't we just have a village somewhere where, <laughs> where we just... <laughs> just house our friends. We grow our own food. (laughs) Um, That is beautiful. Um, So you put on a a 5k this past Mm -hmm. weekend for um, cross country team that you coach. What is it like to coach this next generation? (laughs) It's so cool. Um, I, when I started, I really, I didn't have experience with high schoolers, uh, and to watch them grow and learn these kids are like little Yodas (laughs) and they're amazing. Um, they're hungry to learn. They're students of the sport. Uh, what, and and I'm an assistant coach, but we, we have amazing leadership from our head coach. Um, and he is a, a Christian and he has done a great job of creating like much like the community that we have in Crown Chasers. And he's doing this on um, for the high schoolers. And so they're forming these amazing friendships and seeing success and failures, too. Um, but they're learning. They, they, mm-hmm. It's you. Coach, you always says you you win or you grow or you win or you learn. Right. Yeah. And um, and we get to witness it every single day and it's really unique because they all learn differently and they're all working on different things. And so over the years, it's being able to identify what that person's specific hangup is. And a lot of the times it's actually not physical, it's mental. Mm. So it's so rewarding to be able to do it. It takes a ton of time. Um, but I love seeing them have those aha moments and then being able to apply it and then mm-hmm. being reflective of their growth. It's really Yeah. Cool. That's so awesome. You know who else is learning from watching our friendships? Um, our kids. kids. Yeah. Yeah. I love those moments when we invite, you know, mm-hmm. our daughters to come along and do something with us. That is really special to, to be able to show them what, what it's like to, um, maintain a friendship, you know, because it, it's not always easy, right? Yeah. We, we have difficulties, we have conflicts sometimes, and just to model staying and loving and showing up, even when you don't feel like it, that is really special. And I want y'all to know our group is not exclusive. We do welcome new people. <laughs> Gotta just take the <laughs> So I, um, I loved what your friend said. So we, you know, part of that 5K is we all were wearing matching shirts, our Crown Chaser shirts. We showed up with cupcakes and coffee because we were celebrating one of our runners' birthday. And um, so we invited one of your other coaches, Mm -hmm. friends to come and join us in the celebration. And it was just so sweet how she was like, I was just very touched that you know, you guys invited me to be a part of that. And and I'm like, well, of course, why wouldn't we? (laughs) Like, 
that I, I love that is who we are. Like we're not, you know, I've got 10 cupcakes and no more. Like we're like, no, like come, come, you're welcome. Yes. Come join yes. us. You know, we, we picked up Alma on the track, you know, just, literally just a complete stranger running at the same time on the track as we did. And yes, that's, that's just who we are. And when you, I think when you find good people, they attract good people. And so your network just keeps. Yeah. yeah. So that is how we found our village. Um, can you think of any other ways that somebody who doesn't run might find their community or, you know, where does one go to yeah. find a group of friends like this? Well, my first thing would be obviously to pray and then be intentional with where you're looking um, for me, like I prayed very specifically for a community that runs, for a friend that runs. Um, it, it just depends on what your interests are. I mean, there could be people that like art. Okay, there's art communities all over the place. You could bike or swim or be a musician. There, There's um, many communities. Galore. Theater. Yeah, in, in theater, <laughs> churches. What are your interests? Mm -hmm. And yeah, but I'm going to say put prayer first. And here's the thing. If you wouldn't have taken that step, this probably all wouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing. Like I said, like you, you were prepared as you were prepared in, um, in getting to a next group of, of speed. You also have to pray and prepare your heart for what God is about to do when you're asking him to do something and you have to act on that. You have to take a step of faith in that because I think a lot of, the, a lot of people, they're scared to take that first step and kind of put themselves out there. Um, there's a saying that says it's the start that stops most people, right? So you yep. just got to get started. Yep. So just being willing to take that step and be willing to invest. And I think I had shared, it's you guys that have really taught me what being a friend means and how to invest on levels. I, I literally never even conceived of before. I <laughs> like, it just wasn't in, in my brain, in my makeup. Um, so it's, it's just, getting outside of your comfort zone and being willing to do the big things and the small things. Yeah. I mean, I, I never, I never had any goals to run Boston, yeah. uh, but we did that. I never had any goals to hike Grand Canyon. We freaking hike Grand Canyon In rim to rim. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, I think you guys teach me to have dreams that, or actually just borrow somebody else's dreams. Like, yeah. Those are not the dreams that I had, but I had the best time, you know, hiking angels landing in Zion um, or, uh, you know, I mentioned Grand Canyon. We ran in um, Mesa, Arizona. Oh, that was one of my favorites. That I, was. I would shovel horse crap alongside of you guys <laughs> if I just got to be with you. <laughs> I think that's my favorite line from this recording. <laughs> <laughs> that is going to be the title of this episode. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, a little bit more on a serious note. I, I'm wondering how you're processing current, um, currently being injured and not being able to run. Um, I remember when I was injured, I, I knew you guys didn't leave me behind, but I, I did feel lonely. Right. You're gonna um, try to talk about it because I do feel lonely. I there's just, just something that happens when we're meeting at 5 a.m. Right? There's life, daily life happenings that inadvertently we miss out on when we're not there. Have you found the Lord teaching you anything during this season of just having to be still and not being able to train with us? I have to increase my level of intentionality because I you guys are so important to me. And yes, I'm totally missing out on life. It means I have to make time in other places. And that's something that is challenging for me. And that's why we run at 5am is because it is yeah. challenging to make that time in other parts of our day. But when something is important enough, we find a way. And 
uh, so that I think is the first, uh, there's the first lesson. And then it's just, it's crazy of how much like getting up at 5am and having a schedule. And I mean, there's just, there was an order to my day. There was a routine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And since I haven't been having to get up at 4.30 in the morning to run at 5, da, 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 I started sleeping in more. And then when I started sleeping in more, I'm not in my Bible as much, and I'm not praying as much, and I'm not as connected, and da, 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 da. It's a domino effect in my life, and you guys are, like, the best parts of my day. So I have just, like, the last week, I have to get up sooner, even if I'm not running so that I can maintain those good habits. And one thing I've been trying to do is actually get up, um, read my Bible. I'm spending more time praying and honestly, just, just trying to settle my mind right now is really challenging. And also just to be more present for my family to actually cook dinner or breakfast, like actual cooking. And, um, so I'm trying to do more of those things to, um, to supplement my Mm -hmm. time. Yeah. That's, that's really awesome. I, I always say, who am I when I'm not achieving, right? Who am I when I'm not training, when I'm not being a badass at I kind of fell off the wagon for a few weeks and yeah. it's so not gratifying. And so I kind of sat back and I'm like, well, what can we do? <laughs> like, right. where did things fall off? Where did the wheels fall off? And then you, I look back and I'm like, this is why is because I always yeah. started my day with intentionality and I, right. and I let that go. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I, I think it was last year that you did, but you went through the Bible in a year with your family, mm-hmm. like your mother-in-law, your sister-in-law, um, every Friday morning at 5 a.m. again, um, you guys got on Zoom and you did a study through the Bible. Um, that was, um, so encouraging to me, really kind of challenging to be, you know, intentional, not just, not just get your fill of the word, but actually do it with other people. That was, yes, that was a happy, happy byproduct, but you are the one that inspired me on that. I had never, ever read the Bible from front to back. And, and it was you that had shared some of what you were reading and then, you know, it showed me like the year in the Bible thing. And um, I'm like, geez, I need to, I need really need to do this. <laughs> I see so much growth in you and in your spiritual walk. And there's so many examples that you put in front of me that I'm like, I want to do that too. I want to do that too. <laughs> um, and you do that for me. So then it just <laughs> like, we keep okay. up leveling each other, right? Spur on, spur each other on to good things. Iron, um, iron. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, a hundred percent. And so, thank you for that because I I don't know if that would have happened had it not been for your example in that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, but what a beautiful thing that it turned out to be yeah. for your family to yep. kind of get connected and know more about the Bible and um, you know Jesus. And, and yeah, and so I I can't remember how, but my I was just talking about it in front of my mother in law, my sister in law, and they're like, we want to do it too, and it was months after, um, but whatever. I get to think if they judged in it like kings or judges or something like mm-hmm. that, and uh, but even with that, so it's very easy to sit and evaluate and say, oh, I don't have any time. And it just time to be able to be in the word on our own and be disciplined in that each day. And then now take three people and combine all of their schedules in being in the word and, and talking about it. It's like running a marathon. <laughs> but where there's a will, there's a way. And so we yeah. were intentional about it. And I'm like, well, I'm willing to give up a Friday running. And, and they said, we're willing to be up at 5 a.m. with you. So I was like, done. <laughs> And that is another life-giving thing, right? You think you're taking the time to read the Bible, to run the miles, like that's a good chunk of your day. Uh, But what happens is those practices are life-giving. They don't take away from your day. They actually add so much to my day Mm -hmm. that sometimes I get off rhythm and I'm like, that is so life-giving. Why did I stop? Like, why do we stop? Yep. Like that was such a good time. Why did we stop? 
I, I, I've been telling my kids this. I'm like, please trust that when you are in step with God, don't ever use time as an excuse because he will multiply your time. There's always, I'm always thinking like, oh, well, I don't have time because I need to do this or I don't have time because I need to do that. And every single time he'll show me, like he will make a way that a meeting is canceled or that like stuff just happens that is only God. Yes. Let him multiply your time. Put him to the test. Ah, that is so good. Um, I feel like we're just going to have to revisit this thing. Like, you know, we talked about the running. Um, There's other topics that I want to connect with you on, um, but we're at about 40 minutes, which, you know, is kind of like the limit that I think that I like to listen to people talk. The last thing I want to talk about is gratitude. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you have a practice of gratitude? And if so, how has that um, been transforming in your life? Yeah. Um, So I'm going to be transparent and say, I do have a practice of gratitude. However, I wish I could say I was 100% consistent with it and I'm not. So I just want to be clear about that. Um, I have several different things that I do to practice gratitude. So number one is just waking up in the morning and what am I grateful for? I have a gratitude journal. And so I'll write things in it like I am grateful, thankful, blessed because of and it could be a person or a thing um or for x because why yeah that is like the biggest thing that i do um to practice gratitude and sometimes when i'm working uh i i have like i have a soundtrack and it, when i am feeling off kilter um i have a soundtrack that i will put on and it has a lot of praise music that is it it just is speaking to remind me of who I am, of whose daughter I am, of my place and my intentions in this world. And that always helps just realign me and get me out of my funk. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I can't believe we're almost at Thanksgiving. (laughs) Um, But you are one of the brightest spots in my life. I am thankful for you. I love you and uh, please come back and co-host with me sometime. (laughs) I would love this. I love doing this. This was really great, Lena. Had a great conversation. Love Love you you too. Bye. (laughs) Bye.